This morning's um, video about the Magdalene laundries made a, a rare change as it was actually about real history. Although I wouldn't say it was absolutely something I would have agreed with in every particular, it was reasonably well thought out, reasonably well structured, and showed at least a minimum of research had been carried out and some thought had been applied. However, then, sadly, we're back to the bad old times when we have this. Now, I'm going to do what I did the other day and go through this bit by bit, but I have a surprise at the end of it as well for another video. Hello again. Any supposed development or invention which emerges from Africa? Supposed development. Notice the language already. We're f 10 seconds in and it's supposed development. Any possible, any new findings? There's more neutral language you could use. It is treated with great admiration and respect. It is a way of rebalancing the horribly Eurocentric history with which we are all familiar. That is the history which suggests that, with one or two exceptions, all the important discoveries and inventions over the last 35,000 years have been made by people of European heritage. Yet again, can we have some citations to that effect or some proof to that? This kind of broad, giant, sweeping claim is one you keep putting forward. But we find very little citations. It's treated as a game of everybody knows that, even the dogs in the street type of reasoning. There's no backup for it. You know, things like aeroplanes, telephones, quantum theory, space rockets, steam. You know what? Before the last 200 years, no one had mo most of those white black oration. And some of those, you can argue, have roots in cultures, at least, if not the items themselves, some of the theoretical underpinnings have roots in mathematical systems or discoveries in Asia, at the very least, or in the Middle East. It mentions cars, computers and calculus, to mention but a few. The to mention but a few cherry-picked examples from a very narrow time frame of that 35,000 years. We only would have to go back to your own great grandfather or not much further to find that none of those would be familiar to him. Last invention in sub Saharan Africa, which was wholly original, was the bone harpoon. Oh, so you claim. We've rarely have ever seen actual proof of it. You see, sheer Eurocentrism. No, just sheer arbitrary conditions you've basically taken a very small number of inventions for a very small time frame out of thirty-five thousand years and use those cherry-picked examples to make your case you then move on to make a massively broad sweeping statement a few months ago some archaeologists saw the chance to redress the balance a little by trumpeting forth news of what was described as an extraordinary ancient wooden structure which left them stunned. It turned out that two pieces of wood, one laid on top of the other, were found in them. Yeah, I love how you're presenting that reductionist like um, a style, which is basically a, an attempt at a, an intellectual sneer. If you could just let us all know your own credibility as an archaeologist, I'm sure we'd be most impressed. In 2019, one of the bits of wood, a branch about five feet long, had a notch hacked in it. Some sharpened sticks were also found, and these things too dated from four or five hundred thousand years ago. The find was reported in Nature in September 2023, and newspapers soon picked it up and treated it as an amazing discovery of early technology from Africa. There is a slight problem here, of course, and that is that much the same thing was going on in the Essex town of Clacton. For were they, were they having a chippy down there as well? Now, let, before we go on, let's use Webb's link, if I can get to it down here. And see what the nature link actually said.
dated by luminance to, to at least 476 plus or minus 23 kilo years ago. So that's the margin of error we're dealing with in this. This is the problem with putting these scientific documents up. Some people do actually read them. And four of hundred or five hundred thousand years ago, one, it's vague. Two, you didn't. You could have expressed it as a range of errors, since dating it, any scientific method of dating stuff that old has a range of errors, whichever system is used. Hundred thousand years ago, the Clacton spear was found at Clacton in nineteen eleven. But let's before we go on notice we were doing percentages during the week. As a percentage of, let's assume the Clacton spear is 400,000 years old. Let's presume the one in Africa is exactly 476,000 years old. There's a rather large percentage gap then, isn't there, between the two ages? Shall I work it out on a whiteboard exactly what the percentage gap is by doing divide by 100 and so on? Or perhaps not. Perhaps it's self-evident that 476 is larger than 400,000. Even if we allow for the margin of error, we're still talking about a gap of over 50,000 years. And it is almost as old as the sticks found in Zambia. Other sharpened sticks of roughly the same age have been found in Germany. Some of these... Are... Roughly the same age. Can you actually cite the ages quoted in documents or archaeological findings or cite the dating methods used for them? About the same age as the sticks featured in the article in Nature. The reason that the sticks in Africa were seen as news, something picked up by the BBC and all sorts of newspapers, was of course because it was in Africa that they were found. So little has come out of sub Saharan Africa that even some. Well, it would be a bit uh, silly to report on them if they were as if they weren't in Africa. Of course, that's a self-feeding statement. It's also circular. It's like saying the reason we reported on a man opening a restaurant in Wales was because he opened a restaurant in Wales. Or the reason we reported on, the, uh, I don't know, a popular band playing in Cardiff was because they played in Cardiff. It's a truism. It's pointless. It's a statement that goes nowhere. Sticks which have been notched or sharpened seem to be regarded as a wonderful achievement. The truth is, is that I'd say they're a more wonderful achievement uh, than this video, which is full of the most egregious sort of logical fallacies and nonsense as it, as it rolls on its three minutes, 20 stretch. Things have been found all over the place, even as I say, in Essex. Finding some old sticks in Essex, though, is unlikely to make the headlines. That place not being as newsworthy as Africa. The very fact that headlines are made in this way by such a discovery in Zambia says something about the paucity of invention in that part of the world. A sharpened stick really is something to write home about if you come across it south. Really, is it? Let's have a look at the list of... Let me desize that for a bit, as I really am beginning to hate Zoom and we'll be trying to move to another pl platform to do this after a bit. This is the African History Review which is an academic journal, it's an, and would specialise lengthy, whoppingly long articles. It's up to issue volume 53. Let's have, see how long volume 53 is. Issue 1, 20, this is issue 1 of for volume 53 for this year, is 109 pages long. Volume 53, pages 197. Obviously, these people are finding something to write about. Let's see what's in there. Let's see what's in issue one. There's no history of, of them, obviously, to write about. Nothing at all. So obviously these guys were just, just making it up as, as per fanfic or something, as they obviously were for the other 53 volumes, which if they're an average of two to three issues a year, which is 
probably the case. Let's go back. The academic journals, they're not churned out at a high speed normally. Yeah, two issues a year seems about the norm for this shirt. So that's something like 106 issues. We're talking about an average of 100 pages. Let's do some maths, shall we? Let's presume a rough average of 100 pages. A few I notice have a, quite a bit more as well, and a few have the odd page less. So let's have a look. And let's take off, that's 10,600 pages. I'll take off, say, 100 pages because there's only one issue so far for 2023. So 10,500 pages of one journal with people investigating stuff and uh, senior academics writing that. You, I mean, if you're going to argue they're all Mickey Mouse or they're, or they're all silly things, then I'll actually start digging out some of the articles one by one and reading them and use them that way. Uh, a woefully poor presentation, which... Surprises no one. Rather sad after this morning's much better presentation.